Well, it's Easter, so in recognition of the occasion, let's discuss some Easter eggs. What's up guys, Ace of Thorn here, and welcome to another video game discussion video. I do these discussion videos on a regular basis, so if you'd like to see more of these, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay notified. Now before we get started, let me give you some fair warning. There is a 99% chance that your favorite Easter eggs won't be on this list. This is mostly just my personal top five. Anyway, let's get underway. Number five. In The Elder Scrolls II, Daggerfall, the coat of arms for the kingdom of Daggerfall is actually heavily modeled after the Fleur de Lys, or Flower of Lily, or simply Lily Flower in French. This is the coat of arms for the Catholic Church of France, as well as the royal family. It was created back during medieval times when France, as well as many other European countries, were a theocracy, and so the royalty of France was considered an arm of the Catholic Church and subject to the Pope's authority. When church and state separated, the royalty of France and the clergy in that nation kept using the crest. Well, as you can see, the Daggerfall coat of arms is not exactly the same as the Fleur de Lys, but it is clearly inspired by it. Number 4. The Captain's Guide to the Fishy Stick in Morrowind. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, whenever new users would register for Bethesda's official forums, it became tradition for existing users to welcome them into the community by showing them this picture. So for the 2002 release of Morrowind, Bethesda immortalized that meme by including this book in the game. Of course, the text is obscured by tartar sauce being rubbed on it for some in-universe reason, so the only significant thing about this book is its title. Of course, all these years later, the tradition of greeting new Bethesda forum users with this meme has died off, but Bethesda continues to make re new references to this meme as late as Skyrim. Do you mind? I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very delicate state of mind. Number 3. All the Judeo-Christian Symbolism in Oblivion So it's no secret that the Imperials of Cyrodiil were modeled after the Roman Empire, but it may shock you to hear that the current state religion of the Nine Divines is modeled heavily after the Judeo-Christian religions. In Oblivion, the nods to the Judeo-Christian religions are at their most blatant. First, there's the book found in most chapels called Ten Commands, Nine Divines, which is meant to be a reference to the Ten Commandments of Christianity and Judaism. Also, by fast traveling to Coral Southgate, we can see a statue in the Coral Square that is a blatant reference to the Pieta, a statue made by Renaissance artist Michelangelo di Lodovico, which depicts the Virgin Mary holding the recently dead body of Jesus in her arms and wailing. Number 2. Alduin's Wall in Skyrim When we visit Alduin's Wall during Skyrim's main quest, Esbron only really looks at the left side of the wall and the center. He never even glances at the right side of the wall, let alone discusses its contents. However, if we pay attention to the right side of the wall, a lot of the story comes full circle. See, Esbron implies that Alduin's defeat was in the center of the wall because it was the most important event and therefore put front and center by the Akaviri, but that's not actually the case. The wall is divided into three thirds, each representing past, present, and future. On the left side are past events, aka the Dragon Wars. In the center is the most recent event that is noteworthy, which is Alduin's defeat. Since that was so recent by the time the wall was constructed, it occupies the present section of the wall. Meanwhile, the right side of the wall prophesizes future events which will ultimately result in the return of Alduin. This is where we get to the actual Easter egg for this entry. The engravings on the right side of the wall foretell the events of the first four games in the series. First, there's the Staff of Chaos, broken into multiple pieces, which is the main quest of Arena that forces the Eternal Champion to quest all over Tamriel to retrieve the various pieces. Shortly after that, we have an engraving of the Numidium, which is the primary MacGuffin that the factions of the main quest in Daggerfall are competing to acquire. Then we have an engraving of Red Mountain, which is the final dungeon for the main quest in Morrowind, and last but not least, we have an Oblivion Gate overlooking the White Gold Tower, 
which is a reference to the climax of Oblivion's main quest, Light the Dragon Fires, when Oblivion gates opened up inside the walls of the Imperial City. Last but not least, the number one Easter egg in the Elder Scrolls games is Eric the Slayer from Skyrim. So if you head to Rorik's Dead, you could meet a guy named Eric. His dad owns the local inn, but he longs to be an adventurer. Convince his dad to buy some armor, whether through persuasion, intimidation, or bribery, and he will become eligible to be your companion. Now, companions in Skyrim are a dime a dozen, but what makes Eric the Slayer different is how he actually became a part of this game. He is based on the real-life person, Eric West. He wasn't a famous Viking or anything like that, he was just this one entirely unexceptional guy who had one distinction that made Bethesda take a liking to him. He was a big, big fan of the Elder Scrolls, and the regular posts are on Bethesda's forums under the username Enmok the Slayer. He impressed the head honchos at Bethesda with his extensive knowledge of Elder Scrolls trivia and was invited to a tour through Bethesda Games Studios. However, in early 2011, he posted on those boards that he was diagnosed with cancer, and so the game developers at Bethesda decided to honor him by making him into a character in Skyrim. Unfortunately, he died in 2011 and so never got the chance to play Skyrim and have himself as his own companion. Ugh, oh, so sad. And that will do it for today's video. Thanks for taking time out of your Easter holiday to watch me. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe for more in-depth discussion of your favorite video games, and be sure to check out some of my Let's Plays on this channel, which constitute the vast majority of content that I produce for it. In the meantime, however, I am Ace Thorn, and I will see you guys later.